area these are the three broader areas where the teachers will be judged only just three point, three areas proficiency in the subject and the communicative skills and methodology so what is the methodology uh, that you are adopting to teach to deliver the goods these are the three areas so on which so you are teaching and your uh, judgment will be made so judgment it will not be a supporting judgment only so it's only and most of you we have been doing this as part of the panel inspections but this is a forum where everybody will be uh, looking at your uh, presentation it it's going to be a very uh, a model presentation by each and every teacher so as i know that most of the teachers are very able teachers we have got so the uh, tgts the part time teachers they'll be role models our senior teachers so that uh, the best practices will be adopted by the all of them at the same time uh, recognizing the best teachers mentor teachers and if anybody requires any kind of support from the society uh, society also mm -hmm. will be supporting them yeah. so for such kind of uh, it's only three areas will be uh, adjudging them yeah yeah so thank, thank you, you sir thank you and uh, coming back to the new uh, quality policy uh, sir you are mentioning about internship uh, there are two types of internship uh, one is uh, uh, teaching assistance from foreign countries and also uh, in house internship uh, can you elaborate on the internship right? yeah it's a good question again so internship is uh, basically a process where uh, a person is attached to an expert so this happens in all the you know, schools in the world so here uh, we have uh, teachers who are doing doing very well i have already told that they are mentor teachers and uh, secondly we have the teachers who are facing uh, uh, difficulty in teaching so these teachers will be asked to do internship with those teachers it could last for one week it could last for 15 days it could last for a month it depends on the ability of the teacher to pick up the skills so this teacher this mentor teacher is expected to spend a lot of time on this intern so similarly uh, we need not uh, go to our own society there are a lot of other schools uh, in the country in the state so we will be sending these interns to other schools as well as uh, you know as uh, interns and uh, there like uh, you know you have international schools you have dhan and agrovedic schools you have workridge kind of schools you have international baccalaureate schools you have cbsc you have icsc you have igcsc so lot of schools are you know doing lot of experiments and then we want the interns to participate in all those things uh, uh, you know in those schools and then pick up the best practices there and come back and then spread those practices in our society so it lead, not only leads to personal improvement it also leads to systemic improvement so that's what i mean uh, by internship. internship yes sir and uh, uh, now our children are having uh, e plus activities i think there is a change in the e plus activities and also we are trying to involve our teachers in what way our teachers are getting involved sir yeah so earlier e plus activity was uh, uh, under the tutelage of teachers like uh, teachers were you know observing and then teachers were making some little bit of corrections and teacher was uh, teachers were encouraging so these were the things that uh, uh, you know our teachers have been doing in e plus club but later we realized after talking to a lot of teachers even they also genuinely require some practice even uh, even i also require some practice i practice e plus club every day in my home while i take dinner so i practice e plus club with my wife with my children so and uh, we do lot of talking and then my children correct me and then i also get corrected i'm open for correction even at the age of 48 so learning is a never ending process so uh, two things that we are going to make uh, uh, going to change in uh, uh, e plus club system one we are going to introduce writing skills for the students because we realize that uh, our children are able to speak english better and uh, as uh, you can see from their communication but uh, they are facing challenges in writing so this time we are going to change uh, to introduce two writing modules in every uh, every week session so this is going to be a very exciting thing and then this will improve uh, writing skills beyond your imagination it's going to help you a long way you can excel in all competitive examinations and etc what what not then second thing we are going to start t plus clubs this is something very exciting so what the children have been doing in the last four years now this year onwards teachers start doing the same thing so all teachers huddle together in maybe in front of principal or maybe in the staff room and then they are expected to talk on a topic only in english 
whether you are a Telugu teacher, whether you are a Hindi teacher, whether you are a math teacher, it does not matter, but you need a language. Unless you, the, the research says, unless you speak in English, your children will not acquire the language. So, it is required for the teacher also to pick up the English. So, that is why we have started T plus clubs and then already uh, the circular is ready and then maybe today or tomorrow you are going to get okay. the circular. No, already sent it. Uh, you have already sent it, it is okay, fine. Yeah. So, the circular has already landed in your inboxes. So, just open the inbox and then take the circular and then go through it. There are seven topics or eight topics and every day we will be giving you a lot of topics and then if you are interested you can have uh, much better topics. We are not saying that we know everything. So, you know better than all of us. So, T plus clubs or E plus clubs for teachers very simple. Then while you improve your language to the T plus clubs twice in a week, the school council, the school captain, vice captain and then house captain all these guys they manage their clubs they manage their club. So, th that is the idea behind uh, T plus club. I think it is going to be exciting yes, uh, activity and then very exciting. I, I just cannot wait anymore to yeah. participate in this activity. I yeah. hope that you will also join in the 100 yeah, percent because, because I also need improvement yes. in my English. Yes. I, I just do not think that I know everything. Yeah. So, I want uh, I want uh, my English teachers to correct my English. Uh, why not? Why yeah. not? Uh, I think um, you also mentioned about uh, uh, peer uh, evaluation. Can you elaborate on what is peer evaluation? Uh, I think there is a little bit of misconception about uh, peer evaluation. Uh, their, their feelings may be hurt when somebody sits in my class, especially my colleague sits in my class and observe. Uh, can you just dispel that uh, misconception about uh, peer uh -huh. evaluation? I'm, I'm really, you know, excited to answer this question. It's because it's a wonderful question, and it is a very cost-effective question, and it is very relevant question. See, peer evaluation is a very, very simple technique. Uh, entire Western society follows peer evaluation. Way back in, the, you know, first century AD, we had this uh, concept of peer evaluation. During Aristotle time, during Plato's time, you know, during Quintilon's time. So all these great philosophers had used this the peer evaluation technique. It's very simple. I teach a class, and then my friend, as as a friend. You, I invite you to come and sit in my class and then I want you to sit as a student, but make valid observations about my style of teaching. How did I walk into the classroom? How is my voice? How is my nonverbal communication? Then uh, am I starting my story? Am I starting my lesson with a story? Have I started with why? Have I inc included how? And uh, what am I teaching? How am I able to convince my students about why they are supposed to know this topic? And uh, how am I treating? What is my eye contact with the students? Am I restricting myself to only days? Am I restricting myself only to podium? Or am I moving only in one corner? Or am I looking into the eyes of only one or two bright children? Or am I coming to back benches? Am I involving everyone? Am I giving sufficient space to the children to talk? So, these are the things my colleague in the back, he will be silently observing. And after everything is over, we go for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and then we sit in the staff room and then hey look George, you, walk, you could have walked a little better. Then probably you could have touched those two children who are sitting in the back. Probably you could have danced before uh, you started a lesson. Probably you could have told your own personal story about the topic that you are going to teach. Probably you could have made couple of children to enact a role play, then start teaching. Maybe you could have, you know, you know, you could have uh, remained silent and encourage your children to speak at least for 10 to 15 minutes and then take over the class and then summarize the entire lecture. So these are all the friendly sessions given by my own colleague. Then next day that colleague invites me to his classroom or her classroom and then I go and do the same thing. But let me, let me caution you, this is not a revenge taking exercise. Just because you pointed out some shortcomings in my lecture, then with revenge, with vengeful attitude, I also pick up some holes in your argument and the classes and then I also throw some venom on you. No, that is, that is not the purpose of this exercise. We are going to talk about uh, mild corrections, uh, small corrections, little modifications, how great change, how, the, how, how great uh, they are going to be, how impactful they are going to be in your teaching. So, this is what 
uh, we are planning to do uh, this academic year. We, are, we, are, we have already requested the DCOs and the principals to ensure that there is a peer at least once in a week every student, every teacher should be visiting their colleagues <coughs> classroom and then that shall be recorded in the minutes of the school okay. and then there shall be improvement. There is nothing wrong, there is nothing wrong like if George comes and sits in my office and then keeps watching as how I handle the petitioners and the later sir you could have spoken to that petitioner with little more care and empathy probably I would take it as a friendly advice, there is nothing wrong. We are all human beings. We are tend to we, are, we tend to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, we often fall in love with our own style, and uh, we fall in their rut, and uh, we seldom change our style. Uh, this is a very good program to change uh, our, our style when someone observes and tell us the remarks. So thank you for uh, elaborating on that point. Now I have a certain question, which I think uh, most of our teachers, the uh, viewers, are having it. Like you are mentioning about uh, the state level and uh, uh, district level seminars and uh, all the teachers who score above 80 are kind of uh, looking forward kind of rewards. But unfortunately, there will be some teachers who will be falling below that like say for example, say 60 percent because they may be you know not well prepared or due to various reasons and uh, uh, what happened to those teachers? Uh, do you have any spell out policy for them? Like Absolutely, I think uh, uh, yeah, Lakshma is, is the right, right person, person to, to answer this yeah, uh, yeah. Sir, question. Yeah, the so question is to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah friends, okay, it is a very good uh, uh, discussion deliberation. So, in that uh, demo uh, that we are going to do the, at the, I mean, at the district level or the state level, and as I told just now, shared with you regarding the uh, how the awarding of the marks will be take place. So, some of us may be as secretary was telling about the learning difficulties or the difficulties in presentation and a few of us may come across such kind of teachers and for them a second chance will be given. So, teachers those who are uh, scoring 80 and above, so we will be selecting them as mentor teachers and those who are scoring in between uh, 80 to 60, so they will be the, the next grade teachers, but especially a record will be maintained for the teachers those who secure 60 percent and below in the uh, seminars. So, those uh, with uh, that difficulties may be with language problem, communicative skills, uh, may be with uh, not preparing very well for the presentation, such kind of teachers will be given a chance, second chance they will be given a chance okay. and uh, to rectify their mistakes and they may be doing very well in the next presentation. So, we will be giving a chance to them. So, for that uh, society has come up with a, a policy of the internal standards board internal standards board where society has empowered that uh, board with uh, a deputy secretary and the one uh, academic coordinator, two subjects uh, experts from outside nominated by the uh, society. So, there will be the committee. So, even if they fail to improve after one uh, spell also, they will be sent to the board mm -hmm. uh, to watch their presentation. I hope that every only just a few of them they may be there, they will also try to improve themselves. So, that will be the policy for the uh, teachers with the difficulties yeah. okay. in terms. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you sir for that. Um, uh, I think I have, uh, uh, no, now as we keep talking we, I, I get lot of doubts. So, I feel like uh, this is a good forum to clear all my doubts on yeah, behalf yeah. of the teachers. Yeah. Um, in fact, you know uh, there is something called ISO 2000 certification all the factories uh, and all the big uh, industrial houses uh, they will be certified ISO. Uh, our in, in a sense uh, our schools are also our institutes are also factories we turn out uh, leaders we turn out good uh, citizens god fearing citizens do we have any uh, policy to uh, to standardize or accredit our institutions uh, i think it's a part of our uh, policy even uh, i would uh, like to add uh, to our uh, i mean george that and some of our principals and teachers and some of the institutions they are doing extremely well yeah they are taking so much of initiative. So, we need to certify yeah, them. Yeah, certify them and how the our secretary is going to, yeah, we are going to come out with the yeah. recognize them. I think yeah, uh, our secretary yeah, will answer sir. that, uh, how are you going to certify the institution which are doing extremely well yeah. on different aspects and yeah. uh, what are the process involved in that? Very good, it is it's like, it is <laughs> again a very exciting uh, uh, issue and accreditation is like something uh, uh, we have been spending sleepless nights uh, to design it and uh, we had to do a lot of weightages and uh, we had to identify the factors uh, as to uh, you know uh, uh, which will influence the outcome. So, it was really a very tough process. So, it is very simple. 
Uh, accreditation uh, is uh, like as you said the certification you know uh, it, it is based on a policy where what cannot be measured cannot be achieved. If you do not know which direction you are heading to you do not make any progress you continue to stay where you are it is like a treadmill you stay stationary and then treadmill keeps on moving but you stay where you are. So, that is not the thing that we are looking for we want a physical displacement we want a we want to measure a progress and then that has to be tangible that has to be measurable. So, what are the things we are looking for we are looking for the style of leadership the principles leadership we are looking for the teachers and then their teaching styles we are looking for students and their teaching their learning styles we are also looking for the participation of teachers in the entire school administration we are also looking for the participation of the students in entire upkeep of the school and uh, we also looking for the trust the parents have in the school and the participation of parents in the school we will also look for participation of alumni that is sweros so in the school uh, you know uh, improvement so these things we all take into consideration but that said we are also giving we are also going to recognize that what are the schools that have regular teachers what are the schools that have contract teachers what are the schools that do not have teachers what are the schools that have part time teachers. So, but we are going to take all those things into consideration when we come up with the final score the four gradings are going to be there one is outstanding second is very good third is uh, satisfactory and fourth is you know struggling that is uh, I would not call it as poor, but need to improve. So, these are the four categories and then we will uh, to start with we want to tell it to all the schools look this is where you stand improve these are the areas where you can improve according to leadership uh, as far as leadership is concerned you are doing extremely well. However, your students participation requires lot of improvement in one school uh, there could be wonderful student participation, but leadership is at loss leadership is not able to handle that wave of students participation in particular school most of the staff members are doing extremely well, but community participation is not there at all so, community do not have trust. So, there is some gap so we are going to point out all these things. So, this time the panel inspection is not going to be a routine inspection please be advised it is going to be a different panel inspection. So, we are not only going to see whether you are teaching properly, but we are also going to see whether students are learning properly your final score will be arrived only after we assess your students performance on a random basis. So, that is what we are planning. So, this is going to be a totally exciting and a very very uh, path breaking thing and that this is going to be a model for the rest of the country this uh, accreditation of the schools and uh, the impact that can it create that can uh, that it can create in the school system and impact it can create in the entire community and impact it can have on the respect the teachers would get and impact it can have on the uh, number of uh, applications a school would like you to get. And similarly, if a school does extremely well, we do not have any problem. So, we will pump as many funds as possible for the uh, you know schools to improve their performance. And those schools which are facing lot of difficulty in improving the standards, we are going to have an alternative solution for those schools. So, this is how we are planning to have an accreditation policy, and then I am sure that it is going to bring a lot of changes. Uh, the way we administer our schools. Yeah, thank you, sir. I yeah, brought a question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, sir, in this uh, process, uh, last academic year and before last academic year also, certain schools they failed as a team. Uh, certain schools, I don't want to spell out these uh, names of the schools. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of the leadership, maybe because of the team leadership, and certain schools, colleges, they could not do very well. We feel very uh, sad about it. And how do you support them? How do you, uh, I mean, uh, wanted to convey a message to them those I, 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 I never thought that uh, I would one day I would have to answer uh, <laughs> yeah, you know this question, but it is a fact uh, what you asked is absolutely right. But look there is something called collective responsibility. So, just because uh, uh, two teachers are doing extremely well 
and uh, rest uh, 17 teachers are not at all doing well and they are not cooperating with principal and then everybody is operating in watertight compartments. So, that is not going to cut much ice now. We are going to hold everyone as responsible. If somebody is not uh, performing well, it is your duty to bring it to the notice of the principal and the DCO and the DCO has a specific responsibility of identifying such people who are consistently lagging behind and help them to improve or bring them to the notice of internal standards board. Do not ever think that internal standards board look into looks into only the monthly seminar deficiencies. No, internal standards board headed by our DS academic as a chairman, internal standards board has all overriding powers to call anyone to its uh, uh, you know sitting and then they can ask for explanation from anyone for anything including secretary. So, internal standards board is very powerful, it is uh, uh, you know its organization is different, it is a do's and do'ts are different, it is a constitution is different, it is bylaws are different, it is a it is a it is a kind of supreme court in the entire uh, you know society. society. So, uh, this is going to uh, you know uh, yeah. So, there, there will be a lot of collective responsibility and we will apply collective responsibility system and then do not ever think that uh, we have ignored uh, the results of 15-16. Uh, do not ever think that we have ignored the results of 14-15. We are, we are probing the reasons as to why these schools have been consistently performing low and we are also probing why some schools are consistently performing extremely well and we want to reward those teachers and the principals for their hard work and then we also want to ask for the explanation of those teachers why they have not been able to perform well and I leave it to internal standards board, but this is going to happen and the collective <coughs> responsibility principle uh, we are going to apply here. Yeah, Thank you sir. Yes, uh, uh, sir uh, we all picked up our uh, manners especially good manners and table manners and also body language much later in life. It was like more of a, a trial and error method. Do we have any specific uh, uh, skill training for our uh, students in this uh, new academic year as far as uh, mm -hmm. new quality policy is concerned? I am sure that you have some uh, program for the t uh, students to pick up their manners uh, and uh, uh, other uh, you know body language as well. Absolutely, absolutely George, this is, I was waiting to answer really? this question <laughs> let me tell you very honestly. Yeah, I think it is really, one of the really most really important uh, life, uh, exciting life skills exciting. studio is something yeah. which uh, I am mad about. Yeah. So, every school is going to have life skills studio and then most of the students might be interested to know what is life skills studio. Friends, life skills studio is a room, it is a mini house where you have a double cot, very nice bed and then nice mattress over there and then two pillows, a nice couple of uh, uh, bed sheets and uh, you have a nice wardrobe, wardrobe is like almara where you keep cloths, then a nice dining table and uh, a cutlery of maybe six plates or seven plates, six plates and then you have nice uh, fork, uh, then um, knife and then spoon and then soup boxes, sorry soup bowls. and. Uh, a lot of other things and then you have a mirror out there everything is going to be there and then you have a telephone. So, everything is going to be there and uh, our children will be taught step by step as to what to do in a room. So, when you enter the room how do you enter? Then when you talk to someone how do you talk? Then when you sit on the table when you sit on the chair and then start eating how do you sit? And then how do you uh, you know uh, touch how do you pick up the fork and how do you pick up the hold the knife and how do you pick up the food and how do you eat and how when you drink water or when you drink a soft drink because swearers anyway they do not drink liquor. So, when you drink soft drink, so when you take soft drink, so how do you use that uh, glass and when you have to talk to others while keeping glass in your hand, do you have to eat uh, drink everything at one go or you have to gulp uh, have small gulps. So, when you put food in your when you serve food in your plates, will you put all at one time and then with the big heap or will you take little by little little by little and when you talk will you have food in your mouth and talk. So, when you have to leave the wastage where do you leave the wastage and when you serve how do you serve to your guests. When you arrange your cross in wardrobe how are you going to do it when you use hanger. So, how do you use hanger? So, all those things both boys and girls and then another thing is we are going to teach cooking to boys not only girls. So, we want to become boys very good chefs, why only women should cook in the homes, why not boys? 
So, uh, that is why we, we want to teach boys also the ways of uh, one cooking like how, can, how to make salad, how to make uh, pasta, then how to make uh, mutton and how to make chicken, how to make spring rolls, what not all those things uh, we are going to teach you in this academic year and by the time you leave the society, I think whole world will queue in front of our schools. I want Swero, <laughs> I want to make friendship with Swero. So, this is what is going to happen with the help of these life skills studios. So I think I am very, very excited, excited about this yes, project. Yes, yes. And uh, we are also equally, uh, equally excited to be in the schools. You know, yeah. we, can, we can also yeah. pick yeah. up yes, because there, is, be no, in the studio. there yes. is no room in the head office yeah. uh, so <laughs> where we can create a life skills studio. Yes, yes. So <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. the head office is already cluttered yes, yes. and congested. Uh, now, yes, the yes. children have fine rice and uh, the best yeah. menu possible in there. Now, with the uh, table manners and other etiquette taught, uh, I think uh, Swaras are going to be amazing, Absolutely. amazing, amazing yeah. leaders yeah. in the uh, let in me, India. Let me tell you friends, this has been my experience and this has been my conviction and then this will be my conviction. Future belongs to the people who communicate. Future does not belong to the people who do not communicate, who, who sit silently and then who think that they know everything. No, future does not belong to those people. Future belongs to those people who always think that they do not, they, whatever they have learned so far is not enough. So, in other words, future belongs to learners. Future belongs to the communicators. Your voice, the way you use your hands, the way you use your body and the way you convince other people by your language, the distance that you maintain from the people, the dress you wear in the gatherings, all those things are going to the, the chapel, the shoes that you wear, the polish you make, all those things are, make are going to make lot of difference, tremendous difference in your lives. The future belongs to the powerful communicators. You see America, you see England, you see Europe, they are wonderful communicators, wonderful communicators. They can sell entire country within one minute. They can sell entire Sahara desert within one minute because that is the power of communication they have. So, I want Sveros also to pick up that communication skills and be the leaders wherever they are. That is a conviction, that is a faith. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think uh, 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 with our students are going to be very, very excited, uh, and uh, the they the are not going that. to miss their vacation yeah. as well. They wanted so to be. Lakshmi, school. I would, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, like to share the yeah. Pravalika's yes. experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, friends, just uh, I wanted to sh uh, share with you. So yesterday, uh, Pravalika, uh, she was a student of uh, uh, Mahendra's who passed out, and who has been selected for the CCIP program. She was there in America for ten months. Really, uh, frankly speaking, I am very excited even my communication or anybody including secretary's communication, it is far away. Her intonation, modulations, body language, the courtesies, etiquettes, everything is super, excellent, okay. more than excellent, if there is grade is there, we can award it to Pravalika. So, she is Avarun Saro. I am very excited to see her, her presentation more than my daughters or anybody. She is the first the really, studio. really very, very excited and uh, immediately I told secretary that she must give a presentation to uh, be in Mana TV, she must participate. So, she is an excellent example of the uh, society and Swaro. Yeah. Yeah, great, hats off to Pravalika. Yeah. All right, thank uh, you, uh, thanks Lakshmi. Uh, this year, uh, so our, uh, this yeah, year our uh, Sushma, then Sri Vidya, then uh, Chandrakant. Yeah. Chandrakant is a Swaro of uh, Sheikh Pet, if I am not wrong, and then yes. Sushma is from Matapalli and Sri Vidya is from Nirbal. So, these three children are, uh, today they got visas, uh, it is a good news. Yeah. Uh, American yeah, yeah. Uh, consulate oh. has granted visas to these three children. So, they are flying to uh, USA in the month of uh, August and uh, when they come back, uh, you won't be able yes, to. Yes, we have uh, many Pravaligas, so three more Pravaligas. Yeah, just uh, we were talking about the communication. Yes. Yeah, we can see the, its excellency in Pravalika. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's and yeah. shortly we will be inviting Pravalika to address all of you uh, in uh, Mana TV and then you can you can you can ask as many questions as possible to Mana TV. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, the new NQP, new quality policy takes care of uh, all aspects. Uh, if as all of, an, all of us know, there are four components in uh, acquisition of language that is uh, listening, speaking, reading and writing. The new policy takes care of uh, speaking and uh, writing. Uh, we, for speaking, we have uh, E plus activities and uh, D plus activities. Also. For writing, we have W plus and for reading, we have the excellent libraries and we are going to purchase a few more uh, books to the libraries. Uh, but I think uh, listening skills, uh, I think we need to take care and I think sure that the society uh, under the leadership of secretary has <laughs> got uh, some aspects of uh, listening skills. Yes, uh, absolutely, yes. George. Uh, listening has been a, a big missing piece in the entire yes. thing. So, this year onwards, uh, 
We are planning to have home theatres in every school as I have been uh, sharing with all of you in many fora. So this year it has to be, it is going to be a very different thing and we are going to have uh, home theatres and uh, we are also going to have uh, uh, you know uh, a lot of uh, TV presentations. So uh, you will be exposed to a lot of better uh, English and better language so that you can pick up uh, your language skills from those uh, both teachers as well as students and a lot of uh, digital resources are available in the you know, in the uh, country so but we we are going to we are going to have all those things uh, uh, shortly and uh, definitely uh, i think uh, we will uh, uh, have those things in our school and then uh, most probably all our children are going to uh, enjoy this yeah. uh, uh, listening activity so i think uh, you are always